Hello everyone, can you see and hear me? Quick confirmation, very good. Well, welcome to the episode 5 of Delta Dialogues. This is your monthly shot of inspiration, information and of course an opportunity to connect with the broad peak community that we have and beyond it. And our main goal with this series is to stimulate and engage a broader dialogue, a dialogue with individuals, innovative speakers, uh, prominent players in the industry, but also, as I call it, neighboring communities. And before I tell you about the program today, I want to give a quick reminder that these sessions are meant to be interactive. And from the very outset, I encourage you to be active, uh, to share the uh, information that you have learned and invite your peers and network to watch the recording of this video, but also feel free to ask questions and reach out not only to us, but also the speakers. So, I will now tell you a bit more about myself. My name is Nilifar Bulut. I'm a program manager for strategic partnerships at Photon Delta. I work uh, with many other European players and counterparts in a number of strategic projects, uh, but also with certain clusters within and beyond the Netherlands, as well as certain policymakers and the SMEs in the broad categories of topics and issues that we cover as Integrated Photonics Community of the Netherlands. Uh, I'm very excited to be your host also today for one more time. And uh, we're actually covering a very hot topic, if not a burning hot, hot topic, of human capital and education uh, in the integrated photonics industry. And I think regardless of your background and where exactly you stand or sit in this value chain, in this broader community. I think you have experienced uh, this topic being discussed and voiced in numerous occasions and numerous contexts. Uh, a quick overview of the program for today. We shall kick off with an interview. And we have a very special guest, Rule Bates. I hope I pronounce your surname correctly. If not, then you can correct me later on. Who is a board chaired person of EpixFab, an organization that is creating skilled human resources required for the next generation of innovations using silicon photonics. And then we will move to the who is who section. We have few people from the education side of the equation when we talk about the human capital. We have Kas Dama, lecturer in nanophysics interfaces at Saxion University of Applied Sciences, who will be followed by Urs Weider, research team leader in applied physics detection and measurements at Fontys University of Applied Sciences. And then we will conclude with a presentation by Steven Vandenberg, lecturer in photonics at the Hague University of Applied Sciences. Today's episode will then conclude with another section in the spotlight where we have Ilse de Graaf. She's a recruitment business partner at Smart Photonics and uh, she will provide us with her insights, tips and ideas on how to find the right people for your tech company in current pressing realities. So with that, I think we are ready to begin. Okay, hello Ru, can you hear me and see me well? Okay, good afternoon and welcome to our episode of Delta Dialogues. Uh, it is excellent to have you join us today and to share your opinion and your insights on this very important topic. And without any long overdue, I will ask you to briefly introduce yourself and then I will move on to the questions. It's great to have you. Thank you. Um, so yes, I'm Rul Bats or Bates, whatever you want to pronounce my surname. Um, so in the first place, I'm a, I'm a professor at Ghent University, Belgium, where I have been working in the field of integrated photonics for the past 40-ish uh, uh, years, both in 3.5 and in silicon and silicon nitride photonics, all the platforms actually. Um, and actually here in Ghent, we have a large uh, research group in this field, uh, close to 100 people, the, the photonics research group. Um, working on, on a variety of topics, technological application wise, etc. on this topic. We are also as a research group, we are associated with uh, IMAC and through IMAC, we have also involved uh, quite some involvements with uh, Photon Delta. But indeed, as you mentioned earlier, 
uh, I'm chairing uh, EpixFab. EpixFab once upon a time was a uh, multi-project wafer broker for silicon photonics, but it uh, it evolved to being the European Silicon Photonics Alliance. So it brings together more or less well, both industrial and academic stakeholders in the field of silicon photonics. And it has very much a mission of well, advocacy for this field, of course, but then uh, very importantly, um, all sorts of activities that relate to training and skill development uh, in the field of integrated photonics, silicon photonics in particular. Excellent. I'm sure we can elaborate a lot more on your extensive background and speak of prominence of this specific pilot line, but I'll move straight to questions. It's again great to have you with us. Well, let's go to the meat and juice of this discussion straight away. My question is, is there a skill shortage in integrated photonics? How big is the shortage globally and in Europe? Maybe you can give this perspective as well. Yes, well, first of all, uh, I do not have precise uh, statistics on this, but it's definitely true that just judging from uh, the, the many publicly announced uh, vacancies in the field of, of integrated photonics, also by talking to people in the industry, um, there has been well there has been a shortage of people for a number of years i believe but what i have witnessed is that certainly in the in the past year or two the the cry for people has become uh, much more prominent so so now i think we are in a situation where really the it's it is becoming a limiting factor for industry and also for the uh, r&d community the the availability of people, I think, is 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 becoming one of the prominent uh, limiting factors in, in 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 progress. And the question is, how large is 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 the is the shortage? Well, again, uh, I don't have precise statistics. Uh, within EpixFab, we have done uh, not so long ago a little bit of an um, a crude exercise of first of all trying to come up with an answer to the question: how many skilled people in integrated photonics do work in Europe uh, in industry today. Um, and I mean people who have really a backbone in this field. Eh? Um, of course, in a company, you need many profiles and, and not all the profiles need, need a prominent background, backbone in the field of silicon integrated photonics. But if you count people with such a a, a good backbone in the, in this in in this field we can we came up with a number of the order of 2000 2000 people skilled in integrated photonics working in european industry today whether that's an accurate number i don't know but uh, that's what uh, what we came up with as an estimate then the next question is how many people uh, are missing so to say uh, how big is the shortage again just guessing to be honest but i guess that today it's of the order of perhaps um, uh, 20 to 25 percent of the number i mentioned earlier so i think i think the industry today could easily absorb another uh, several hundred people with a backbone in uh, integrated photonics mm -hmm. That's my estimate. And of course, globally, it's, uh, yeah, globally, uh, US is probably still considerably larger today industrially in this field than Europe. So perhaps twice as large. And then there is Asia. So perhaps in total, uh, I think globally, perhaps we talk about a shortage of something of the order of a thousand people uh, today. Okay, so the situation elsewhere might be slightly better. The disease is not so acute elsewhere. Could we conclude that? No, I, I, I think the, the situation is acute across, uh, across the across world. The, okay, well, let's go to the root of this. That's a very interesting perspective, so we can establish uh, a few inferences already. But uh, how did we arrive here? How come there is such uh, an acute shortage? What explains well, this? Well, I think that's easy to explain. First of all, I think there is a general skill shortage in many technical fields and, and certainly in in many high-tech technical fields. I think in the semicon se semiconductor industry in general, there is a shortage. But then integrated photonics, um, well, it's not so long ago that this was a bit of a niche field. Huh? Um, mm -hmm. 
go back go back 10 years and how big was integrated photonics activity in industry actually not large at all so it's a young field but it's a young field that is now growing very rapidly it's it it, it has double digit growth and uh, while it was a world of um, at least industrially it was a world serving mostly the needs of um, high speed transceivers for telecommunication for data communication data centers etc now we see this trend towards uh, a, a large number of very different applications mm -hmm. in many different markets many different fields um, there is there is uh, there is lidar there is computing there is quantum computing there is sensors uh, diagnostics medical you name it and that has and and with that there is a lot of new industrial activity it's still very much an econ economy of promise i think in the sense that many of the the new startups already need people perhaps they don't have yeah. products in the market yet yeah. but to make those products you need skilled people so there is a a large demand for people to help develop new projects across many different markets all based on integrated photonics so it's simple to explain it. Yeah, understood. Then let's uh, shift the discussion towards the solution. What is being done and uh, how can we fix the situation? Will the existing programs, to the best of your knowledge and understanding, existing programs of education and training be able to close this gap? And if the answer is yes, then what are the time frames, realistic time frames that will be needed to do so? Well, first of all, if we have to fix the problem, perhaps we only have to go to fix in the Netherlands. Um, but okay, little little Dutch joke. Uh, anyway, um, well, I don't think there are magic solutions here, to be honest. Uh, you cannot just uh, create skilled people out of the blue overnight. That is simply not possible. So I don't think there is a short term uh, fix to the problem at all. Um, having said that, it's of course imperative to do extra uh, effort to create solutions. Um, and I think you need to do it at many different levels also because you need a variety of profiles uh, in, in terms of people needed by industry. So I think you need to work at different fronts and um, to take the extremes of the fronts where you can work is, first of all, there are those engineers already in the job in working in industry who perhaps have an electrical engineering background, perhaps an uh, engineering physics background, perhaps more software oriented background. Um, it's not terribly hard to um, to uh, uplift their skill profile so that it also includes integrated photonics. That's in principle not so difficult. Um, and I think a lot could be done to create, there are not so many programs to be honest that have mm -hmm. that specific objective. So that's something that could be created. Of course, the, whether then there is a big influx in such programs is another question because many of those people have jobs and they, uh, there is also a shortage in whatever field they are working. So, but I think that is definitely something that can be done. Uplift skills of engineers already on the job, um, but not exactly with an integrated photonics profile. That's okay. one extreme. The other extreme is that you go to the to the bases and that you go to the universities and and try to motivate students in bachelor and master programs. Um, to choose for a program uh, that is focusing more on, uh, on, on on integrated photonics. We have a number of such programs, mostly at the master level in Europe. Um, mm -hmm. So far, they were not, uh, the degree by which they attracted students has not been massive. Um, mm -hmm. Again, here you have a bit of an, uh, an, an, a problem of a field that is not very well known yet in the general society. Um, mm -hmm. If you talk about software and software engineering, everybody, everybody understands what software is, that there is a need for software engineers, yep. etc. That is much lesser the case in, in photonics, integrated photonics. 
ask somebody yeah. in the street what is photonics, what is integrated photonics, and they will not have yeah. a clue. I, I think you're touching upon something very important, Rola, and you're doing it with a smile, but I think then, in essence, let's by all means uh, improve the existing educational programs. Let's by all means tap into the neighboring industries and experts who are already there who could be easily diverted, retrained, adapted, so to speak. But then the necessity and the pressing need to raise overall awareness on this uh, emerging and evolving industry and the high demand in there and the promising career and how uh, and the prospect of maybe how it will continue to grow in the years to come. This general awareness that has to happen within average people you meet on the street perhaps is also a very important area to cover if we are to fix this problem. That's very important but you cannot uh, do it overnight and you should also be careful to not overdo it. The fact remains that today integrated photonics is still, if you compare with the field of electronics at large, it's still a very small field. Okay, mm -hmm. it has uh, more rapid growth for sure, mm -hmm. but what we do need, but that doesn't happen overnight, what we do need is one after one success stories of mm -hmm. companies that do not just get founded, do not just develop a product, but yes, reach the market in, in decent numbers. Um, I completely agree with you. This will speak louder than many advocacy and education campaigns, 100%. I think you have partially started to answer my, uh, started answering my last question, but um, what then is the roadmap? What would be the critical core ingredients of the roadmap of how do we get there? And I understand a lot of it cannot be with the very rigid timeframes, but maybe a few core points. Well, I, I do think uh, start creating a variety of programs that address the different profiles. I mentioned the, the engineers that are out there already on the job, but lack skills in integrated phonics. Make sure mm -hmm. that we create something where they can go to. I, I don't think there is much today, to be honest. Okay, there mm -hmm. are there are one week long schools and there are seminar, seminars and webinars and training courses of, of a few days. All of that exists. But if you want to uplift the person so that really he uh, he already has he or she already has an engineering back up, backbone, but mm -hmm. not, not in optics and photonics. Yeah, OK, you need you need a full time equivalent of of a few months of dedicated study to build that backbone, perhaps mm -hmm. distributed over time or something. But And in that respect, there isn't much around in terms of programs that fill that gap. So I think it needs a bit of um, mm -hmm. effort and dedication and, uh, and probably some shifts in funding to create such projects, uh, such programs. Um, mm -hmm. to create visibility for them uh, so that whenever whenever a company needs extra people, not only can they create vacancies, they can also look around in their own company and say, okay, perhaps we have people who have, inter who have an interest to mm -hmm. go back to the school books for a short while, for a, say weeks, months, uh, not years, but weeks, mm -hmm. months, I think. Um, and then be trained to, to do something slightly different. I think that's an important part of the roadmap in my view. And of mm -hmm. course, we can strengthen also um, the, the, the programs at, at bachelor and master level, but that's a more, that's a longer, longer term solution, of course, because bachelor mm -hmm. plus master is five years. So, mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure we also need to create more um, more opportunities in terms of programs at, at a more vocational level mm -hmm. um, with where you need people of various profiles again. So there again, I think uh, we need uh, more programs that, that address the need for uh, the mm -hmm. needs for integrated photonics. Uh, Rule, I'll be very honest with you. First of all, I thank you for your time. And uh, if no, for time constraints, I would ask you 12 other questions, and I'm sure we would have very heated discussion. Uh, what you provided today, in my opinion, is quite an optimistic and constructive view 
but it is a reserved optimism. Uh, we should not underestimate just the uh, complexity, maybe also comprehensiveness of the approach that is needed in uh, addressing this acute situation we have with talent, not only in Europe, but also globally, as you mentioned. Uh, I do not yet have any questions from the audience. Maybe some people will uh, ask you questions in the chat later on. I want to thank you for your contribution to today's discussion. And uh, I would encourage our audience, those people, many people who will be watching the recording also to reach out to us and to you if they have extra questions or ideas they want to share. Thank you very much, Ru. My pleasure. Thank you. Okay, with this, I think we are going to move uh, to the next section. Okay, now we're moving to the who is who section. And here I'm gonna give a floor to Kas Dame, uh, a lecturer in nanophysics interfaces at Saxion University of Applied Sciences. Welcome Kas, uh, great to have you with us today and the floor is yours. We can do some initial check. Uh, I'll start sharing our screen uh, first. Yes, I can hear you and see you perfectly well. Great. So I started? <laughs> yes, the floor is yours. Please begin. Yeah, yeah okay, great. Thank you. Well, thank you for this uh, opportunity uh, to, to speak on this, uh, on this session uh, and to introduce a bit our research groups uh, at uh, Saxion. Uh, we're here with two more colleagues from Fontes and from uh, Hague uh, University of Applied Sciences, and then we're presenting a bit uh, our way of working uh, towards research, um, which is called practice oriented, oriented research, uh, in which in this case I also dedicated to integrated photonics. Uh, my position is, is a lecturer and uh, maybe for the audience who are not really familiar with uh, uh, or the, the, the organization of University of Applied Sciences, it's, it's a position which is very similar to that of a professor in a, in a research university. So uh, I'm the head of a research group and we actually do research, but it's practice oriented research and I would like to give a bit more of a feeling of what that means, what, what practice-oriented research is, and give some examples of, of, of what we're doing uh, in our group. <clears throat> so um, this is typically I, an image that I, uh, I present when I have to introduce uh, practice-oriented research. Um, basically, what we try to do is to, to bridge the gap between the results from fundamental research, as is done in, in universities, uh, research universities, and questions and problems for companies and society, which basically means that we don't, do not do fundamental research, uh, but we're more aimed at trying to solve problems using existing knowledge. So more or less we take the position uh, between applied research, uh, where, where, for instance, uh, devices are developed or, or principles are developed, and industrial research where people are really trying to, to, to really re uh, develop products. So we're trying to, to see if for certain problems, certain uh, results from uh, applied research are applicable and can be used there. So th that's basically what we're, uh, the field that we're working in. Um, as I said, uh, the, the, the research at the University of Applied Science in general uh, uh, are aimed at solving these, these societal problems. So always we start from a question from society. Uh, that can be society, but it can also be from companies. Uh, so it doesn't really have to be uh, related to, to the society as a whole, but also to specific companies that have problems and want them to be solved. So in general, uh, when we carry out uh, research projects, we cooperate with SMEs, uh, and with public sector uh, in consortia, and typically this consortia consists of a number of parties, so it is not one to one, but it, it's in larger uh, groups. And uh, the third characteristic of, of practice oriented research is that it should have an impact on the professional practice and the educational system. So that means that uh, on the one hand, uh, our results should be uh, also reflect back on, on, on education. So uh, that means that we uh, introduce a lot of students and teachers. And at the same time, uh, it should also have uh, impact on pract professional practice, which also means that we also need to work at a certain level. So we also have experienced researchers in our group. Uh, in my research group, or I actually want to share with a colleague of mine, uh, is aimed at applied nanotechnology. So it's, it's, it's a rather broad scope in which photonics and integrated photonics is, is one of the themes in our, our research group. We have uh, 30 people uh, in our group, so 30 uh, researchers, of which eight are involved in uh, integrated photonics. Uh, and at this moment, uh, we have a group of 60 students working in our, in our uh, research group. Uh, not all of them are working in, in, in photonics, 
but uh, well, more or less a quarter of them is, so like 15 students. Uh, and that means that uh, in the second half of the year, we will have another group of, of about 15 students working in integrated photonics. And at the moment, we have uh, 70, uh, seven uh, projects running uh, which are related to integrated photonics. And uh, here are some example subjects that we're uh, that we're uh, investigating in our group. Uh, well, on one hand, we do a lot on application development of new technologies, like uh, photonic integrated circuits as biosensors or as chemical sensors. That that's one of the subjects that we're uh, quite a lot of uh, research activity in. But we also do a lot of development of technologies. Uh, for the use of integrated photonics in, in larger systems, so like uh, manufacturing of, of, of integrated photonics assemblies, uh, packaging, uh, readout of, of uh, photonic devices. Uh, and the last one is that we also do a lot of in, in assembly and production technologies uh, for, uh, for PICs in, in larger assemblies. So, of course, we're always looking for possibilities to cooperate with uh, with industry. Uh, so there are a number of possibilities uh, to 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 join and help our uh, our work. Uh, of course, you can participate in a funded project. Uh, we're always looking for parties that are interested in the work that we're doing and that uh, have actual uh, actual problems that they want to, to to be solved in the project, but also uh, to learn from each other. So we also, of course, uh, need to learn from 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 the practice and from the companies. Uh, there are innovation traineeships, which are basically uh, related to students that do their graduation project in a company and then receive a traineeship afterwards for a longer term uh, to, to enhance their, their professional skills. Uh, and of course, companies can always offer internships and small projects that students carry out. Uh, and we're also open for guest lectures. So those are basically possibilities to cooperate uh, with, uh, with our group and then with our university. So mm -hmm. thank you. That was my presentation. Uh, thank you very much. That's a uh, um, very concise presentation, but also uh, very encouraging and thought-provoking. I have a few questions, since we don't have yet questions from the audience, if you don't mind. So, my first question is, do you think uh, there is enough awareness from government and public authorities on the need to train more professionals uh, more individuals in this, well, what seems like niche technology in this uh, domain? I, th I think, of course, in, in the Netherlands and I think in Western Europe, it's a more generic problem in the sense that there are, is a lack of, of, of uh, people te with technical skills uh, in a broader scope. Uh, it's also what, uh, mm -hmm. what my previous uh, speaker also mentioned. Uh, they're, they're, and I think that the government is well aware of that. Uh, but at the same time, I don't think that there's, there's a big plan behind it. So what you see mm -hmm. is that they stimulate. Uh, we get big programs uh, within the growth mm -hmm. fund. There are big programs where there's a lot of money reserved for educating new people, but there's no real, uh, I said, real aim at where, where, where these people should come from. That, so mm -hmm. we get money to educate people, but we don't know where to find them. That, that That's the main, main issue. And uh, we're trying in all ways to, to, to improve the numbers of people that, that actually go for a technical and, and more better oriented uh, studies. Mm -hmm. But it's, it, it is hard to, to convince people. And, and actually, I think, uh, as I understand from people, that these are things that should be already brought to, to children at a very young age, already in primary mm -hmm. school, people develop, uh, children develop a, a preference for either a more uh, beta and technical oriented studies or not. And, and that's when they come to our university, I think they already made up their minds and then, yeah, they they work in, in, in they go for technical studies and, and, and we try to guide them to photonics and, and other fields, but uh, the total number is, is actually too small, I think, to fulfill all the all the needs that are, that, that are present. Mm -hmm. I understand. Well, uh, on the positive side, what you're saying, there is a very good recognition and acknowledgement on the public in a central level that such issue exists. But then what are the most effective, compelling uh, plans we have or working mechanisms we have to resolve it, particularly attracting people to go in this direction when they choose a career or educational field is still not so clear. Uh, do you think an industry has a role to play? in raising this awareness because at the end of the day they are strategically interested in having the right people trained in the right amounts yeah i, th I think in general of course uh, especially if, if, if you consider that these these children at a relatively young age already make up their minds it's, it's, it's really important that they also have an image on, on what 
they can contribute when they choose a specific career. So, and, and mm -hmm. I think for a lot of, of, of studies, this is not very clear. In the old days, people chose mechanical engineering, they understood how to, to fix a car, to fix a bicycle. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah. To tell a, a child of, of 10 years old, he's going to work in integrated photonics. I think he yeah. has no clue what that would mean. So th there, there should be mm -hmm. uh, made some awareness, uh, but uh, as honestly, yeah. I don't know. Oh, but uh, jokes aside, I understand your point. And I think in a very uh, tangible and meaningful way, we're going back to overall uh, raising awareness of average people on what is happening in technological domains, what are what do we mean by photonics, and that photonics industry and educational field has moved far beyond uh, lasers and what are the first uh, trivial things that come to people's minds. Uh, I'm a, sure. A of, oh, sorry, there's a lot of initiatives currently going on for outreach to to people in primary and secondary uh, education. Uh, actually to 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 uh, encourage them to to choose for a, a path in this uh, more technical study so in that sense uh, there there's a lot of things going on currently uh, of course they will pay off only in a, in, a, in a number of years so. yes most definitely there are no easy fixes or quick fixes in this domain i understand that well uh Kas, i want to thank you for your contribution and uh, please stay tuned for some questions that might pop up in the chat. And uh, yeah, I, I thank you very much. I'm sure our paths will cross with the upcoming activities and Photon Delta. It's great to meet you like that. Sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, thank, thank you very you much. Okay, now. Uh, next on the line is Urs Weider, research team leader in applied physics detection and measurements at Fontys University of Applied Sciences. Urs, I hope I pronounce your name correctly. That, yeah. Unfortunately, I think your mic is muted and I cannot hear you yet. Yeah, I said I was impressed how you figured out how to pronounce my, my name. <laughs> That's great. Well, it's great to have you on board with us today, and uh, I give the floor to you. Feel free to share screen and start. Let's see if that works. Voilà, thank you. Is this visible? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, this is this is actually the realm we're operating in uh, between the, uh, the application side and uh, the world of ideas. That's the bridge uh, Kas was talking about. And we actually have three times, first of all, uh, our goal are applications, and that can be because there's an, a direct question, that is an innovation pool, or there's an, uh, an academic idea which begs for an application, that is the innovation pool. But it can also be that we see how to combine ideas which are ar around to come to something else which is new. That's what I mean by a push. And those are the three times of types of applications we're looking for. And first of all, Habio Hab is actually a triangle eh, between this practice, research, and education. For us, the research is important. That's the grinding stone for our, our application, of our education. We want to make our education as forefront as possible, that we teach them actually the right thing. And the only way they can do that is have a connection with practice, eh? that's industry, the ecosystem, and to research. We need it. Otherwise, we can, cannot provide the necessary education. We turn in kind of high school kind of frame, and that's not good. To give you an idea what we're doing, this is a simple, and I, and I choose this one because this is actually initiated by three Habios. Kas is one of them, Den Haag is one of them, we are the other one. And it shows a bit what our forte is. We're trying to figure out a sensor to measure temperature and pressure separately optically. And Den Haag is trying one avenue, we're trying another avenue, and kind of in the, in the past find a way to figure out what is the best idea. And then the idea of our, our idea starts with the fiber break rating. Yeah? This is our, our baby. And the fiber break rating, rating can measure temperature and pressure, but always in a combination. And the idea is to use the, uh, the polarization of light. In this fiber break rating, you have a lot of uh, evanescent fields, so you have a chance if you put antennas around it eh, to force the polarization of the light which comes through. And on, on the left side, you see actually one of our earlier designs of um, uh, one of these antennas. The light comes from front, uh, from back to front, and we rotate the polarization. And you see it actually 
uh, uh, let it pass or not. That's an example of how we work. And we take ideas which are already around. Huh? Fiberbread ratings are not new. Uh, antennas are not new. Uh, evanescent field, they're all not new, but we combine them to something which is new, like a kind of pathfinder. And I think that's our forte. Um, another thing is how we are involved in, uh, uh, in large scale consortia, for example, this pig test, huh? that's a, a big consortia. And actually, the aim is to facilitate industry. A challenge shared is a challenge halved. The, the, our TU is involved in this, which is just next to it, us. We are involved. Many companies are involved. And we are involved in two ways. First of all, to develop skilled workers, yeah, the talent development, but also in the sense from most uh, elements on photonic integrated chips are self-referencing, except for the part where you couple in the light and take out the light. Is there a way to figure out how to do, make this self-referencing too? That is a longer term project eh? because we are in, in essence an education system. We have this rhythm of education, so we cannot produce in on a month scale, but we can produce in the say two year scale or something. Eh? And it, it takes time to figure this out. That's actually our way of working. You see the work package, eh? it's aimed at industry to facil facilitate the production of photonic integrated chips. On the other side, uh, that the two big, uh, big Huy Fonses had uh, a quantum delta and a photon delta. And the aim is to, uh, it comes from quantum delta, but we would try, we want to combine those two so that we draw as much people as we can because they are re related eh, to the center. Uh, everywhere where there's a HBO next to university, that's Eindhoven, Den Haag, uh, Leiden, Amsterdam, and Enschede. Huh? You want to uh, put a talent and learning center. And the HBOs are in the lead, huh? but they're combined with the TUs, which are next to us, huh? even with the MBOs and the local ecosystems, and provide, on one hand, uh, education, on, 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 on the other hand, do projects together and develop new skill sets and maybe new applications. That's how we work. And you see the four fifths, are we trying to do this together as HBOs? That makes us stronger. This is actually in a nutshell what I wanted to, uh, to present actually, to give you some kind of idea how we're working, because I think that's one of the, uh, well, the handicaps HBOs have, they're not so known what they provide. Thank you for your attention. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, that's a very sharp and straightforward presentation. And uh, one thing that I want to appreciate from the very outset uh, with the previous presenter as well is a very strong link um, with, uh, well, I say uh, with industry, but uh, the application driven education. I think that is very valuable, very impressive. And uh, I also notice a very close collaboration among the applied science universities and schools, which should add a lot of value. But my question is going to be a bit high level. So if you look at the emerging or growing, fast growing, evolving industry of integrated photonics, in your opinion, what kind of rough percentages, what kind of personnel are we looking for what do we exactly need? Do we need really complex researchers, PhDs who can carry out the next generation R&D uh, in application domains? Are we looking for the engineers or technicians who need to work in the lab? Uh, so what are the actual needs of the industry if we spread out in these rough categories? I think, um, but that's on a personal basis, eh? what we need yeah, yeah, is yeah. actually these, these, these bridge builders who know enough from academia to know that things are around eh? and are mm -hmm. able to translate this to actual practical things which you have in a lab. And that's missing. Mm -hmm. The builders. The builders. Well, uh, how much can we rely in filling this gap or bridging this gap on uh, the experts, professionals from the neighboring industries. Is it a good idea then, as one of the strategies for, let's say, public authorities and government to say we will retrain the talent, reorient talent through this cross-pollination from uh, the physics, from uh, maybe electrical engineers, etc. I think that's an opportunity missed, that we do not do that enough. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at our education system, and indeed uh, it's already said, uh, the, this 
this training of neighboring skill sets to also be applied to this skill set is not mm -hmm. really present in our, at least the Dutch education system. Mm -hmm. But then once, well, that's a very interesting point. But once the talent is there, once there are amazing graduates with a fresh enthusiasm, do you think it is very logical and straightforward for them to locate opportunities within integrated photonics industries? At least uh, when they graduate from one of these applied science schools, is it straightforward and clear that there are unique opportunities and the momentum is now? Is it well known? No, 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 not, not at all. We, mm -hmm. we have a lot of lot of promotion to do there. Okay. The, it starts off with simple things. Yesterday we had a, a person who is a real, in his blood engineer, giving a, a presentation about his fiber break ratings and how you can turn them uh, into sensors and really on the low level. And mm -hmm. for our students, eh, which are applied physics students, eh, that already was, uh, the doors went open. They didn't know this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think if even they don't know it, eh, what about mm -hmm. the rest? Yes, understood. I, I get to your point. There's a lot of food for thought and uh, uh, digestion, I would say, and a follow-up. I thank you very much. Sorry, but it's another thing. Eh? If you look, take yeah. a look at the Dutch ahead. education system, we missing opportunities there in how we train our, our, our undergraduate students, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we have time limits, but Urs, uh, you know that uh, next big chapter, National Growth Fund proposal, uh, a lot of activities uh, and the, one of the core pillars actually covers topic of talent. I would very much look forward to see you at the table discussing these topics, but also providing this very valuable bottom-up perspective on how we go about addressing these on various levels. I thank you very much for your input and uh, thought-provoking uh, statements and realistic picture. Thank you very much. Okay, and our last presenter today in the Who is Who section, Steven Vandenberg, lecturer in Photonics at the Hague University of Applied Sciences. Welcome, Steven. Uh, we are very excited to have you with us today as well. And our attention is all yours. Please feel free to share screen and... Uh, to unmute your microphone as well. <laughs> yes, thank you very much for inviting me. Um, I will share the screen. Should be there. Yes. Well, my name is Steven van der Berg. I'm a lecturer in photonics at the University of Applied Sciences uh, since uh, the beginning of last year. So it's a new, newly established uh, research group. Uh, actually, it's at the Hague University of Applied Sciences located in uh, Delft. So we are very close to the Technical University of Delft. Um, the practice-oriented research has already been uh, explained in, in the previous presentation. So I think I will uh, keep this very brief, but also we are in this triangle of, of uh, research, education and practice. And uh, what was mentioned already is that demand-driven research uh, is, 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 uh, is very important for us. And um, we want to create uh, well added value for all the three parts of this, of this uh, knowledge triangle. Um, the research in itself, of course, but targeted for the for the business and society, uh, but also innovation of the curricula uh, of the educational programs is is, is an important uh, uh, driver for for the for the practice oriented research in the uh, the, uh, the University of Applied Sciences. Um, we try to, of course, to, to enhance the research attitude of, of students uh, in that sense, and also. Um, Practice-oriented research brings together students and potential employers uh, via internships. Uh, uh, in the, well, uh, as it, this is usually very well a fine, fine network, I would say. Um, in our uh, research group, um, that is the photonics research group, we are more like the the users of uh, photonics and the uh, appliers than than that we are uh, developing. Uh, 
for uh, photonic integrated circuits themselves. So we are more oriented on how to use them and how to use photonics in, uh, in general. Uh, the, it's a, the group is like other universal applied sciences is multidisciplinary. So uh, physicists are well represented, but uh, we mix them with, with people from, for example, process and food technology to bring technology and application uh, together in one group. So or, or uh, physics in combination with mechanical engineering. Just to give a flavor of the activities that we do, made a, a slide just giving an overview of, of some activities. Uh, we focus on photon photonic sensing, mainly targeted at, at uh, well, the sustainable world, I would say, in a general sense, with the three uh, main branches. The first one is photonics for Adrian food, and we are looking at the possibilities of applying handheld or small spectrophotometers, for example, for this purpose. How can we bring the photonic technology, for example, to a greenhouse or to a food processing industry? Um, another branch is on structural health monitoring. Uh, um, fiber optic sensing was already mentioned. We are currently starting a project together with a small Delft company to, uh, to further uh, dive into uh, fiber optic sensing and the in particular uh, temperature dependence of these sensors and then we have the metrology toolkit uh, i actually have a background in metrology i worked for a long time at the dutch metrology institute be before i came to uh, to the hague university and we are have all types of students that are also very suitable for uh, for students to uh, to uh, to work on like shape sensing how the movement of the body cyber optic sensing the use of, of structured light to, to measure shapes. This is a bit strange picture, but it's a spectrometer with several LEDs to, 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 uh, to look at products. And um, we also are working on the development of a setup to compare uh, uh, spectrometers and imaging spectrometers. And one element of this is it's really application oriented. And we, for example, look at how can we make a low cost solution so it becomes more applicable and more attractive for for the users um, i think in view of time i go on this is just an idea of the structural health monitoring uh, that that we are aiming to apply to a bridge this is a bridge in taiwan actually that we uh, want to monitor and compare to electronic systems i will not go into the details here this is an example of the, the, the toolkit a demonstrator that the students are developing uh, just illumination by several colors of light to to get uh, more information on the spectrum so you you apply the spectral selection at the source size source site several students were involved in this and participated also in a domain applied sciences pitch competition which was very nice also for them to to demonstrate they were successful there uh, we are moving on with other student groups now to expand this in terms of wavelength range, homogeneity, and so on. Uh, the metrology took it was also nicely represented. Students are working in that this group on the prize, actually, on this uh, domain applied sciences competition. Um, so this helps also to bring them into contact with uh, the, the field. And this is a, a project that we are just moving on with now the development of a reference source, how to compare uh, sensors, how because calibration of sensors is quite important topic uh, as well. So um, validation and calibration is one of our points of attention. And we also have some program running on uh, lifelong optics learning. So this is also connected to the discussion earlier, uh, um, together with several educational institutes in the region, uh, also TNO, also Leitz Instrument Maker School. We are currently running a program to uh, well, to enhance the, the optics skills of, of people working on companies already. And uh, we are bringing together the work of photonics and also of nanotechnology in the uh, uh, key enabling technology and innovation lab that we are currently setting up as a uh, our university. So that was a very brief overview. And um, just like uh, other universities of applied science, we are always happy to collaborate, uh, 
on, on uh, in research projects, uh, on, on uh, being uh, involved in challenging application oriented questions. So mm -hmm. I'm very open for any collaboration. Thank you. Well, Stephen, thank you very much for a presentation. I actually want to applaud all the speakers, but uh, more broadly and uh, uh, in true sense, the universities and schools of applied sciences. I think you really do justice to that name and the uh, uh, research results, considering that these are students, are very, very impressive from what I can tell. Uh, my, my question is going to be, again, a bit more high level. I, I can see there is a lot of cross-pollination, so to speak, of uh, experiences and research among the schools in the Netherlands, but also with the neighboring key enabling technologies like Nano you just mentioned. And it, it sounds all good and impressive. But my question would be, do you think there is a room, uh, validity um, and added value from a broader uh, overlap and closer collaboration internationally, maybe with the rest of the Europe, on this exchange of talent because it seems like there is not one single international conference or a meeting that I attend in Europe but also with the clusters from uh, Canada, let's say, uh, who do not mention the same problem that they are experiencing. So do you think is there anything to be gained with a more broader collaboration with other European players, European schools? Yes, uh, for sure. Uh, and. Um, we can, of course, discuss the same type of problems that we are experiencing mm -hmm. in that it's yeah. very hard to find enough skilled personnel. Of course, it's somewhat like a bit of a water bed, eh? you, 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 because it's a general uh, problem in the technical field to get enough people. So if you, <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it makes it also very hard to solve. If you take them from another field, there, there, there's a hole left there. Uh, so, th so that, but I think in general, this, this international exchange is very fruitful. Um, we, we had an Erasmus student uh, uh, for in, in our group for half a year, and mm -hmm. um, now she decided to study in Delft and stay. And uh, I think this way of exchange is anyway very val valuable, mm -hmm. independent of the of the of the mm -hmm. resource problem, human resource problem. But it's it's valuable for for mm -hmm. for all of us. Yeah. So we 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 actively try to, to, to have this international contact as well, like the project that we're running now with a company in, in Taiwan, for example, that is mm -hmm. also very um, attractive for students to get involved somehow. And also, yeah, it just broadens your view on the world. So, and, and, okay. uh, yeah, it's not okay. directly a solution to the problem, but at least it helps to, to, to discuss uh, together also with it. And, also, mm -hmm. from an educational point of view and research point of view, collaborations anyway very valuable. Understood. Yeah, I think that's also very important. Eh? I mean, where two plus two becomes more than uh, four, and maybe this exchange from research point of view is also something we always need to bear in mind. Okay. Well, uh, Stephen, we do not have a lot of time, and I also do not yet have questions from uh, other participants, but I would encourage those who are watching the recording of this, and a lot of people will do, to reach out to you if they have questions, ideas, or are looking for research or other sorts of partnerships. And that's applicable to all of the speakers we had on board today. And I thank you very much, Stephen. Okay, I'm on screen again. Very good. Well, today's episode is coming to its ending, but it's not ending yet because in the concluding session, in the spotlight section, we have with us Ilse de Graaf, who is recruitment business partner at Smart Photonics. So Ilse, please tell us how to find the right people for our tech companies and the tech industry, most importantly for our exciting field of integrated photonics in this, uh, what seems like pressing realities when it comes to human capital and talent. Welcome and the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much, first of all, to, uh, to have me in the spotlight and to allow me to speak on such an uh, impressive stage. Um, yeah, my name is Ilse, uh, like you already introduced me, and I already have 20 years of recruitment experience, uh, of which eight years now in the high-tech uh, recruitment companies, uh, ASML, and the last two years I'm a recruitment business partner at uh, Smart Photonics. 
And um, yeah, it's also a pleasure to see uh, uh, all the uh, representatives of the universities here because uh, I would like to thank you because uh, actually yeah, the people you educate with so much passion and care uh, uh, and enthusiasm are the employees of, of, of my company and many other companies in the field. So you're doing already a very good job. And uh, yeah, thank you for that. But um, yeah, like it's been said before, there is a shortage of, of people. I think it already starts at the academia to find the right students for the right educational paths, uh, and that grows uh, into the industry uh, as well. Uh, I prepared a presentation, so if you allow me to uh, share my screen. Yes, go ahead. I think yes. you should be able to do that. Can you see it? Not yet. Okay. Now? No. Nope. Can you see the screen? No? Okay. Not yet. Let me try it again. Sorry for this. Um, can you see the window now? Yes, something is happening. Elsa, we're almost there. Yes. Yeah? Yes, okay. Perfect. So first of all, I wanted to show you the, the recruitment facts within my own company, Smart Photonics. So when I joined in August 2022, uh, 2020, we had 65 employees and year to day, 151, actually 152, because we just had an offer accepted during this, uh, this session. I just saw the emails popping up. Um, for us, the main source to find our candidates are via LinkedIn, referrals and our own ecosystem that involves also the industry and partners like Photon Delta as well. Um, the referrals is actually uh, people in the company uh, uh, engaging with people they know from previous companies or from uh, previous uh, educations and they come to recruitment and sharing a name or a lead. Uh, that's for us a really interesting source of, of finding the right uh, people for our company. Um, good to also give you the idea is that 20% of the hires we did in 2022 requires a relocation. Uh, um, biggest group of this 29% is a relocation within Europe, but we also see an increase of hires outside Europe. So that indeed indicates that locally the talent cannot be found anymore and we need to expand uh, uh, the, the, the search uh, and go uh, yeah, global actually, we are recruiting globally. Um, we have a really relatively very small recruitment uh, department. We have 1.4 FTE and one of them, and I have an interim colleague uh, helping me at the moment because it's a bit too much to do it alone, but still a very small group of people who still have to yeah, attract and engage with the talent uh, in the market. And the question you all want me to answer is, yeah, how do we find that people and what do we do to find them? Um, now, first of all, um, Recruitment is a company-wide effort. Uh, in the industry, you often see that uh, recruitment is on rec uh, recruitment department only. But no matter how enthusiastic, how well skilled the recruitment department is, if you invite a candidate to your company and the interviewer is not enthusiastic or the environment is not attractive or the interviewer is too late, everything adds up. And in a scarcity market, uh, we call that um, the red carpet experience. Everyone in the company yeah, has to be engaged and, and prioritizing recruitment. Uh, 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 to do so. And a very nice example is that our own CEO, uh, even though he's exceptionally busy, when we have a candidate, especially in senior level, he is involved in the interview stage and I am able to schedule an interview within one week, no matter how busy it is. And that's showing the importance of uh, yeah, a company effort. Um, I believe also that the, to know your target group and many companies, but maybe also some of the universities, they make the, in my option, a, a, a mistake. They have corporate language or university language. They all draft exactly the same job descriptions with the same language, with the same keywords. 
but you target a young student in integrated photonics way different as you target a senior director or a vocational degree operator. And I think uh, adjusting the language, being flexible in how you promote yourself is really a key takeaway. And that can be improved not only in our industry, but in any industry. Um, invest and expand your network, get to know the ecosystem. Well, uh, yeah, we met uh, during the event uh, in, uh, in Basel for the first time. And uh, uh, the event in Basel is an industry event uh, and there, it's not a place for the recruiter to be visible, visible. I think I was the only one of all the companies that, that was allowed to come, but it helped me to get to know the network, to gain more understanding of uh, yeah, the complexity of the system, all the industry involved. I joined a few sessions uh, yeah, to get to know my target group, to get to know what language do they speak, uh, yeah, and that enables me to recruit them better and understand them better. Um, yeah, and, and this is uh, uh, happily, we, uh, we already said it. Yeah, I believe the industry should also heavily invest uh, in, in uh, not only finding the talent, but also uh, enabling uh, talent to grow. What uh, we can push uh, or, or point towards the academia, that if the, the, the schools don't have uh, companies that want to uh, offer internships. Well, <laughs> so what do we do as smart photonics? We really invest in future potential. Uh, we visit schools and that already starts at primary school. Our CTO went to the uh, class of both his uh, sons. I think they were grade three and four or something uh, in a clean room suit explaining what a wafer is uh, showing uh, and what made the most impact was the small washing machine where the wafer is cleaned uh, and uh, a year later still all the kids remember the, the washing machine that cleaned the chips for their mobile phones. We offer internships, we have fresh grad positions. Um, and then also one takeaway, maybe that's less relevant for the educational uh, uh, um, listeners, but really interesting for the ones from the industry. The amount of people we reject is 10 times, sometimes 20 times higher as the people we hire. Well, the people we hire, we all know we have to you know, engage with them. But actually, uh, the, the people who share your post on LinkedIn, the people who might help you finding a suitable fit because they aren't, but they have a neighbor or a friend or a colleague, uh, is, the guy, is the one you reject. And uh, still major companies uh, have uh, the standard rejection template if the rejection template is sent because still not many people don't even get a response. If they get a response, it's uh, the template. I believe rejecting someone with fair and honest feedback requires time, but helps you to broaden the network, build your uh, uh, amount of people that follow you, that like your posts, uh, uh, um, and eventually enable you to, to hire more people. Um, and I want to be honest because we struggle too. It's challenging. We see an increase in withdrawals. We see uh, um, uh, competing against each other's uh, offers that are overbid. Um, so it's a, yeah, it's a war zone and we have to deal with it. Um, and I would like to end with one thing that maybe keeps everyone thinking a bit, because in recruitment we have the phrase, we are looking for the purple squirrel or we are chasing unicorns. But my last advice is that what if we offer a magical forest instead of changing the unicorn and maybe then the unicorn appear by themselves. That was my uh, presentation. Thank you. I, I really like the last line. Uh, very interesting and also uh, thought provoking and discussion provoking on many levels. Uh, I appreciate the point about rejection with some sort of a feedback, tangible feedback and human touch which without a doubt is going to cost a lot of hours and a lot of efforts, but will pay off, maybe not if not to your company, but by and large. Uh, I also note an uh, important point you made about looking, having to look for talent outside of Europe, relocation even from one city to another city, if you have a family and all sorts of other things, in the Netherlands is already a question. 
well, let's say it's a stretch in Europe, but now if we're going global because of this necessity, there are a lot of uh, uh, pros and cons and nuances to attract that talent. And that goes much beyond the numeric measure that we are putting on the table. So in that sense, uh, do you think we're doing enough as Brainport region, as this uh, incredible region we have, to make life easier for this uh, sometimes transatlantic maybe uh, relocation? Yes, we do. Really, we do. Because mm -hmm. I, when I call candidates all over the globe, the ones who prepared and Googled a bit, they mm -hmm. all come up with Brainboard. And mm -hmm. uh, they all know that, uh, um, yeah, especially the high-tech campus area, the Brainport region, uh, that, there, that we engage with talent, what they like most actually about uh, the, the, the questions they have are not that complex actually. They want to know, uh, is it cold in the Netherlands and how cold is it? Can I get the food I want to eat? Are they supermarkets? So we have that big picture of, of we should all offer everything, but the questions they have are very basic questions. Can my kids go to school? Uh, um, can I speak my own language? Uh, mm -hmm. And we are a very international environment. So no matter what background you have, there is a cricket team, there is a chess playing, there is football. There is always something. We have great spouse initiatives, which I also encourage. We have an international school, but also the local Brainport schools are offering uh, classes of English. My daughter is seven and she's already educated in the English language. So, yeah, I believe we are doing a really great job. Mm -hmm. We could do a better job, but... Um, yeah, I like to yeah. approach it from a positive view. Uh, yeah. And most people are really eager to come to the Brainport region rather than going up more north or uh, 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 to the other countries around us. We are actually doing well. Well, it's great to know we have such a profile and make such an impression upon Googling. Well, uh, on a constructive note, that's very important. Another small question I have, uh, we're running out of time, and it, it was an excellent presentation, very thought-provoking, as I said. So you said you have to really adjust your, uh, well, maybe uh, job announcement is a very general word, but how you approach the talent you're trying to get on board in your companies, in your industry. So what, what would you say towards a younger generation, and I don't mean to be ageist, but uh, this is a society which is... Uh, driven by green values, values in general, more humane and just growth and just more is not enough for the younger generation to make decisions with regard to their future and career. So what do you think as HR, as uh, human resource managers in a more strategic long-term perspective? What message should be through and is not through on behalf of integrated photonics ecosystem or industry in approaching these people, in attracting that talent, in convincing them well, um, what I like to sell is the adventure in combination with the sustainability, which is, of course, a hot topic. Um, mm -hmm. I always try to avoid uh, phrases like inclusion and diversity or sustainability. It's, of course, an important topic, but just mentioning the word alone doesn't help. You have to explain mm -hmm. why. So, first of all, I explain that uh, a photonic integrated chip is environment friendly, costing less electricity, uh, lasting longer. So, it does actually fit in a very sustainable situation. Um, that part, I think we should, uh, we are selling more the technology mm -hmm. and not the benefits of the te technology. Or the impact, or the potential yeah, the impact. impact. Yeah. yeah. What will it reduce if, if this technology runs and flies and within 10 or 20 years, how does it reduce the electricity usage? What does mm -hmm. it mean in amount, I don't know, amount of trees? Is there someone I, that can calculate Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, so bring across the message beyond the technology, the advantage of the yeah. environment. I think mm -hmm. that's something we could do. Uh, um, and the, the youngest generation is also really interested in their own learning curve. So mm -hmm. how can they grow and develop and keep on developing? Well, then we are the best industry ever because we are a growing industry. So if you develop mm -hmm. alongside the industry, grow is inevitable and mm -hmm. will happen for sure. There is a pressing need to grow, to evolve and learn, I would say. That's excellent. Well, uh, Ilse, thank you very much for your insights. It was very good to meet you in person, not in yeah. the Netherlands, of <laughs> like course, I, elsewhere. Yeah. 
And I want to thank all of the speakers and uh, I'm sure our paths will cross with this. Uh, so I would like to invite the audience and those who will be watching the recording. Uh, at the end of the day, this is an uh, interactive session and we are very much interested in the feedback of the community. If you would like to contribute in terms of your ideas, how can we better serve you? What topics are very hot and interesting and need to be addressed? You're more than welcome to provide your feedback in the feedback section on our website. And I also very much hope that you will be joining us on November 2nd for the next episode. Uh, please stay tuned. Uh, via our social media accounts. You will hear about the program, about the lineup we have, and uh, again, reach out to us and all the speakers, amazing speakers, very committed, dedicated people we had on board today. Thank you very much. Till the next time. Bye.